Um, Ariel's given you uh, 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 some important facts about the tar sands and about the projected impacts if they're allowed to grow uh, in the way that is forecast. Uh, and I'm going to supplement that now by, by first of all speaking a little bit more about the environmental impact uh, of, um, of oil sands uh, development and then giving you a bit of the picture about what's proposed for Saskatchewan uh, so far and also uh, speaking a little bit about the potential of a, a different kind of energy strategy for Saskatchewan that would focus a lot more on renewables uh, give a lot more attention to um, energy conservation. Uh, but first of all, um, the environmental impact of the oil sands. Uh, and I just want to supplement here what uh, you've already heard from Ariel. Uh, she talked about, first of all, the, the water impacts. And, uh, and she rightly pointed out that um, we're talking about water use that is about equivalent to a, a city size of of two million people uh, every year. Um, what is important for you to know about that water is that not only is a lot of it used, but a lot of the water becomes toxic, uh, about 90% of it. And it ends up in those tailings ponds that she showed you some graphic pictures of. What's also useful to tell people about those ponds is that 1.8 billion 1.8 billion liters a day of toxic water goes into those ponds. And those ponds are now 60 square kilometers. As Ariel said, they're more like lakes. Um, and it is astounding, isn't it, that we've allowed this as Canadians to take place right next to one of the major rivers in the country, the third largest uh, uh, watershed system uh, in the world is the Athabasca River system. And, uh, and these ponds are located along the Athabasca, separated from it by tailings dams. And it's important for you to know and share with others that these tailings dams leak, uh, and, in, uh, and in large quantities. Uh, so we're not just talking about a trickle. Uh, millions of liters of, of water a year leak into uh, groundwater and into the Athabasca River as a result of the operation of these tailings dams. And therefore it's no wonder that there's sickness and health problems caused downstream uh, as a result. So toxic water is one of the big issues. And in Saskatchewan, uh, there's, there's, well the, let me just back up and say there's two kinds of oil sands development. One is the kind that Ariel was showing you in um, uh, in the slides, that is basically strip mining. The other kind of uh, uh, um, way of extracting oil sands is what's called in situ development. That's I-N-S-I-T-U. And what that basically means is steam extraction. So you're heating uh, the bitumen up uh, and you're bringing it to the surface. And, uh, and this bitumen can be anywhere from 100, 200 meters uh, below the surface and you use steam extraction to, uh, uh, to get at it. And there's a large amount of water used in that steam extraction process. M uh, much of it is recycled, but ultimately you're looking at, um, at disposal underground uh, with, um, uh, with water that's associated with in situ operations. Uh, so uh, that's important, I think, to share with people as well. Um, now, a second key issue that uh, Ariel touched on briefly is greenhouse gas emissions that are associated with these facilities. I want to put this in a Saskatchewan context for you. Uh, Saskatchewan already, before we touch oil sands, has a very high per capita greenhouse gas emission footprint. Uh, average greenhouse gases per capita in the world, about four and a half tons uh, per person. Average greenhouse gas emissions in Canada, 20 tons per person. Average greenhouse gas emissions in Saskatchewan, 72 tons per person. We emit 72 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions as a province of a million people already. Uh, obviously, oil sands development will add big time to this. 
And when you ask Saskatchewan environment officials what their plan is for reducing emissions in other areas so that they can make room for their planned all sands facilities, they tell you they don't have a plan. And notice that uh, the province in 2007 set a target to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 32 percent by 2020. That was done in the last year of Lauren Calvert's uh, government. The, the new premier has indicated that those targets are likely going to be dropped. And it's no wonder that uh, there's a plan for dropping them because if you do all sands development, you can't possibly meet them. Um, so I, many of you are familiar with the impacts that are associated with greenhouse gas emissions. And I don't want to uh, get into detail on this now, but for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, some of the projected in impacts are widespread drought in many parts of the world, uh, melting land glaciers, uh, the melting of Greenland and the Antarctic. Uh, uh, in, we're already starting to see that happen. Uh, elevated sea levels with extensive flooding of coastal areas. Uh, particularly in the, uh, in the, from 2080 on, uh, huge impacts. I won't go into further de detail right now, but suffice it to say that in order to avert the worst consequences of these impacts, we have to reduce greenhouse gas emissions per capita in the world uh, by 2050 down to about two tons per person. You can see that a jurisdiction that has emissions of 72 tons per person will not be tolerated in the international community. And what oil sands is all about is driving those emissions up a lot more threefold. Uh, the, the greenhouse gas emissions from oil sands are a threefold conventional oil production. So uh, this I think is a big issue for us here in Saskatchewan. One of the impacts that Ariel didn't have a chance to touch on is acid rain emissions from the oil sands. Uh, there is uh, 375,000 tons a year of sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide that is emitted from uh, the Fort McMurray mm -hmm. operations. And 65 to 70 percent of that, those emissions make their way into Saskatchewan on the prevailing winds, which as you know are mostly west to east. And, um, and therefore, uh, we are affected by those acid rain uh, emissions. Uh, now, the southern part of the province won't be impacted in a major way because uh, our soils are, have a sufficient buffer uh, to, uh, that the, the acid rain doesn't really have a lot of effect. But in northern Saskatchewan, where the composition of soils is much different, uh, the bedrock is very, very sensitive to acid rain. Lakes will be sensitive. Aquatic ecosystems will be very sensitive. Forest ecosystems will be very sensitive. Uh, and uh, uh, there are no uh, plans in place right now to regulate uh, acid rain emissions coming from Alberta into Saskatchewan. So we need transboundary regulations in place. This is a critical issue for us, even if oil sands are not developed in this province, we're being affected by Alberta's impacts. Um, a fourth point that I'll touch on is that one of the things you'll see about oil sands is that it is very hard on the forest. In Alberta, where there's strip mining taking place, of course, the forest is just decimated. Where these in situ operations take place, which, in other words, it's not um, uh, strip mining, it's steam extraction. Uh, what you see instead is uh, uh, a lot of infrastructure laid down in the forest. And biodiversity in the forest significantly impacted in a negative way uh, through the establishment of this infrastructure. Uh, you know, if you had, say, a 10,000 hectare plot in the forest, uh, that's roughly the size of area that a, a steam extraction plant would set up in. 8% uh, of that will be infrastructure. There won't be any part of that site that's more than uh, 300 meters from infrastructure. So a lot of the animals that you normally see in the forest move out of an area where uh, an in-situ steam extraction plant takes place. And if you establish a number of these across, uh, across the northwest corner of the province, you'll have a very 
negative impact on biodiversity in the, in the forest.